Hello and welcome to Automation Talk. We are glad that you join us today and hope that you're going to learn something with us a little bit about our DC permanent magnet motors. Well, as you know, you signed up for it, but uh, to reiterate, this is our permanent magnet DC motors and this is our Iron Horse brand, which is Automation Direct's own brand. And uh, we are carrying these. We have these in stock. We've, we launched these, what, about a month or two ago? A little over a month ago, yeah. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And well, let me go through the agenda real quick, and then I'll let Tom sort of jump in there because he's Kay. the guru on these. <laughs> uh, of course, we'll have the, the motor operation, some applications, uh, design, form factor features, uh, part number explanations, not that fancy or exciting. The but <laughs> last part of it is kind of just Yeah, just the part numbers we'll on it. Through. Brush changing because these do have brushes in them. Uh, there's name plates, the dimensions, and then Tom will actually show you a uh, little bit of uh, how he set these two up and how we're actually operating these because one that he's got over there is actually running through one of our PLCs. Okay. All right, first slide we've got. Okay, um, to start with, a um, little basics and everything. First of all, Iron Horse, um, the, the brand name for our motors uh, are manufactured by the same company that manufactures our Iron Horse AC motors. Right. Um, they've had 20 years of experience in supplying motors to you know, the whole world, so, you know, we feel real comfortable uh, when we were looking for a permanent magnet DC motor uh, to go with their offerings and everything. We're going to cover basically 11 part numbers, um, and along with that we have a couple accessories, and one thing we're going to tell you right up front, um, you know, the motors come with brushes installed, but also in the box, so make sure if you buy one of the motors and everything, uh, you look in the box because there is a, a spare set of brushes um, with every motor and then we'll cover the accessories but you'll see that you can um, also buy uh, spare brushes um, from us and everything. So to get started, they're permanent magnet DC motors. You might ask, you know, what the heck is a permanent magnet DC motor versus all the other type of DC motors that are out there on the market. Um, so there's actually non Magnet or non-permanent magnet? A actually, some of the <coughs> first DC motors that were out there and everything, actually, uh, the armature had a commutator with brushes that would get the DC voltage uh, into the windings of the armature, but then the field would be additional windings that also required DC. Um, in a lot of cases, I can remember from my experience and everything, uh, we used to take shunt-wound DC motors where we would actually control for speed, we'd actually control the amount of voltage on the field. The armature voltage would be fixed. Okay. And by varying the uh, field voltage, you know, we could change the speed and, and um, torque characteristics. Um, the problem with a DC motor, uh, any any of the folks that are out there or still use them and everything, the controllers would have to have a field loss safety control because on a shunt wound DC motor. Uh, if you took the voltage away from the field, um, you know, it would run away. And <laughs> actually, um, that kind of situation was used often to test um, and on purpose to take grinding wheels, connect them up to a DC motor, start the motor up, and then have guarding on it to test that guarding to make sure if that grinding wheel exploded, it wouldn't do any harm or injury to personnel or, or, or the machine. They take the field away and let that motor just wind up, and I mean, you know, we're up to five, six thousand RPM, and all of a sudden the wheel explodes, and uh, there's a large bang. Um, but our motors are brushed; they are permanent magnet, um, and also, you know, brushed DC motors are probably the most popular in the world. And if you think about it, you know, they're simple. Uh, you have permanent magnets. Um, you know, the downfall is the fact that you do have brushes that are going to wear out and um, they need maintained and everything, but so uh, anything from uh, from from Shane's um, little remote controlled <laughs> helicopter, that's a small permanent magnet DC motor um, in there, so they're they're you know popular all over the world. Generally, uh, permanent magnet DC motors are used in um, smaller fractional horsepower up to a couple horsepower. And actually, you'll see in the uh, 11 part numbers we're going to cover today, we go from a third of a horse up to two horse. <coughs> now, Tom, why would I? I know you talk about some of the, some of the. You're going to talk about some of the uses now. Um, why would I use a DC one versus an AC? Um, there's a lot of different applications. 
um, where you're going to need low speed at high torque. Um, DC will do that, whereas an AC motor uh, trying to run it down to lower RPMs with an AC inverter or a drive um, a frequency changer, whatever you want to call it at this point. Um, when you get out too low, you run into problems with cooling effects and everything. Starts overheat. Overheating, plus, you know, you get much below 20 hertz or something like that, then you start your uh, torque uh, starts falling off and everything. So with the DC motor, uh, the current draw is linear and um, with constant voltage on it. And the other good part of them is um, they uh, um, have... Um, instant response and everything to uh, changes in the speed. We should mention, even though we do carry the um, line of Iron Horse DC motors, you know, currently we do not carry a line of controllers. There's not yet. Not yet. We're working on that. There are a ton of vendors out there, and what you'll see now, we're not really plugging them in any way, but they're uh, were convenient for us to use, but we're actually on our demonstrations here today, we're using a DART DC motor controller. Um, we've tested our motors with various um, different uh, DC controllers out there. Um, the one thing back to the little diagram, you know, so you're going to have the permanent magnets as your field. You're going to have an armature with a commutator. And the commutator basically transfers you know, the power. There's only two wires, so it's getting the DC voltage into the windings in the armature through a set of brushes. Mm -hmm. And the commutators, as it rotates, pick up different windings. In the illustration there, there's like 23 or 24 windings shown. In the actual iron horse uh, motors, there's actually 64 commutator, commutator segments, <laughs> the actual cop copper bars that uh, transfer the power into the windings, and there's also 64 windings in each motor. And that's, that's important. The more windings and everything else, um, built into the motor or the design of the um, DC motor, the uh, smoother operation you're going to get out of it. So some manufacturers might use less. Yes, yes, very much so. Uh, if we want to go to the um, next slide, and RPM enters into the uh, calculations for that too. Okay. Um, we might want to talk about typical applications, um, but basically DC motors are used quite extensively on conveyors and turntables, as you see on the slide, but it's usually where you need adjustable speed, but you want to uh, maintain a constant torque. And basically, you know, speed and torque kind of go hand in hand in a DC motor. So if I have a conveyor application and I'm running it at a certain you know, feet per minute uh, and I start loading, uh, product on it and everything. My product might, you know, I might put two pieces and then that might weigh five pounds and then all of a sudden I dump, you know, 20 pounds of um, right. product on it. You don't want, um, you know, the motor to slow down. You want to keep your production rate or the speed of the conveyor constant. With a DC motor, it's going to keep that torque constant um, uh, by detecting, you know, the load on the conveyor and bring the speed up or whatever to keep it moving. Um, also, DC motors are great for um, reversing, mm -hmm. and um, they lend themselves pretty, pretty easily to uh, dynamic braking through the controllers. With the controllers, um, it's just a matter, you know, when I'm running them, they're, they're a motor, but then when I want to brake them and they're spinning, I can actually take that, the energy uh, that's being produced from the motor as a generator and dump it to some kind of resistor bank or something to break them and have them come to a uh, fast stop. Next slide. I think we get into a little bit of the design thought process that went behind the motors and everything. These motors in particular were designed so you know they can be used with um, SCR type um, controllers. Uh, also, they can be used with PWM. Um, typically, you know, DC motors over the years and everything have either been uh, designed to operate from 90 volts DC or 180, and that basically comes from the fact that, you know, we can take 115 and rectify it and get it to 90 volts DC, or right. we have a 230 volt single um, power source, we can get that down to 180 volts and everything. Uh, again, like the slide says, uh, we can do uh, linear speed and torque characteristics. Um, and again, high starting torque 
you know, on heavy loads and everything. Right. It's the important uh, use for them. And capable of dynamic reversing, simple two-lead construction. Now, you mentioned a while ago when you and I were just having a, a discussion beforehand that uh, traction motors, yeah. we were talking about some traction motors, and um, you talk about, you know, the high torque. Um, that's what, I know, uh, locomotives that's what they actually, they actually use, uses DC, DC motors. I think I was talking about a shunt wound yeah. uh, DC motor where you have separate armature and uh, field voltage controlling you know, the characteristics and everything, whereas a shunt motor, I'm sorry, uh, traction motor is series wound, so you actually take the armature um, and the uh, field and you wire them in series. Uh, so the same DC is going through both of them right. and through the commutation and everything. It gives you uh, all kinds of... Uh, heavy torque. I know crane, <laughs> big cranes yeah. use traction motor, DC traction motors. Uh, what do we got on the next slide? Um, form factor. Let me try to cover this real quick because it's important. I mean, being a DC motor, if we took some batteries and hooked them up and got 90 volts of DC and some kind of um, you know, rheostat or a resistor bank and everything, we could control the speed you know, with batteries <coughs> and everything. So like an electric car. Like electric car, exactly. Um, so with batteries, that becomes pretty much pure. There's no ripple. I mean, most of the controllers and everything you're going to run across are going to be powered from AC, whether it's, you know, single phase, 120, 230. Um, there are, you know, larger DC controllers out there that get into three phase. Three phase actually uh, gives you a better form factor. And what we're talking about with form factor is, the difference between pure DC, which is a form factor of one, but once you get into rectification of AC, um, your form factor starts to rise. Um, so with our motors, you know, we do not, you know, recommend exceeding 1.35, and basically what that comes down to is any type of uh, DC controller that's using half wave rectification. You can see in the little diagram here, <coughs> you know, we're, we're actually turning the DC off and on, whereas um, if we go to full wave rectification and filter it, we get closer to that being that pure uh, DC. So bottom line, you know, the better regulated the DC is that's being applied to the motor, um, you're going to prevent premature uh, brush failure and also uh, eliminate excessive motor heating, if that makes sense. I hope it does. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Next slide. Um, some of the uh, you know main features uh, we offer the motors. There's five models and a half horse to 1.5 horse um, with 90 volt DC armature mm -hmm. control. There's five or six models. I'm sorry that go from uh, 0.33 to two point uh, well, two horse at 180. Uh, I don't want to just sit here and read the slide, but you know all of them are NEMA 56 and uh, Class F installation. Um, they're all CE CSA. Um, Two-year warranty, you know, great two-year warranty. Mm -hmm. Motors fall in the same category as, you know, the other products we sell where you can get a 30-day, you know, money-back guarantee. So if you have an application and you need to try it, you know, um, don't be afraid to test the motor. Um, one of the important features is in the smaller units, um, like to Shane's left, we actually, those are totally enclosed. The motors are all totally enclosed, and this is non-ventilated. Right, there's no fan on the back. There's no fan, whereas over here where I am, if we can get a shot of it, uh, the motor on this side and everything, that's actually, let's see what we're looking at here. No. Okay. Other side? Yep, the other side, over where I am. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom, you might have to turn that one in the camera. There you go. Let's see we go. I, I don't know if you can see it. Let me it here a little bit but this actually has a fan cover on it and the fan so this is our totally enclosed fan cooled uh, model these are in the um, one and a half up to two horse models and everything again two-year warranties uh, what's in our next slide additional features um, removable base so we can take the base off um, we can also the space saving design let me explain that real quick um, typical AC motors are going to be you know, yay, big round and so long and everything and, you know, kind of squatty and everything. And that's the way, you know, the design comes out to get all the windings and iron and the cores and everything into them. Whereas a DC motor lends itself to where they can actually be designed, you know, uh, smaller and 
diameter, but to get the horsepower, the length starts growing right. on them. Um, I mean, to me, it's kind of amazing, like in the little helicopter that uh, Shane had up here earlier, that motor in there is, you know, it's about maybe a oh, it's about inch the size long. Of, yeah, it may be maybe like not, a not even that. Eraser. And it's a quarter of an inch in diameter, so you know, the squeeze, you know, permanent magnets in a in a uh, armature inside there, it's kind of amazing to me in a DC motor. Um, again, easy access to the brushes. Uh, we got a couple slides in here where we show, you know, how easy the brushes are to change out. Heavy duty bearings. Uh, the shaft is made of a high tensile uh, steel. Again, easy, large, large name nameplate with all the data on it and um, electrically reversible. There's only two wires, a red and black lead inside the uh, wiring terminal box. Right. Yeah, so it's, it's two wires plus ground. Well, we always suggest you wire the ground. Yeah. In our little demos here, we took the time to actually um, bring the ground all the way through and inside there's a grounding terminal. Uh, so we strongly, like Shane said, recommend grounding the motor and everything. What's on our next slide? Part number explanation, not too much to that. The MT part of the part number is, you know, our series of iron horse motors, the PMs for permanent magnet. An example shown on the slide, the uh, P33 basically means if the P is in front of the 33, then that's where the decimal point is. So it's a .33 or a third horse. Uh, of course, single phase operation, it's a DC. Um, the L um, basically um, stands for the voltage, in this case 90 volts DC, and 18 stands for the um, upper limit on the RPM, which is 1800. And it's the same uh, basically format that they used for our AC drives as well. They just yeah. tried to follow the same one, that way it didn't just throw a curveball. Actually, ball. I think the chart we show up there, you can actually substitute some of those numbers in mm -hmm. and get to, to some of the AC um, part numbers and everything. Um, here's a list of the part numbers. Um, basically, you know, again, there's five of them in the 90 volt uh, armature right. range, up to one and a half horse, and uh, there's six part numbers in the 180 volt DC uh, armature range. Uh, highlighted the uh, accessories. Um, Shane, if you can get over to Shane here, I think spare brushes uh, we offer. There's two different part numbers depending on the um, horsepower size of the motor. Right. Uh, these are extra large brushes. As you comparison. mentioned earlier, they come. They do come with a spare set of brushes. Yeah. There's, there's already one installed in the motor. It comes with a spare, and then if you need more, you can need you more. Can buy we them. have them online, and then we also sell a uh, adjustable sliding um, base for applications. Um, I think we forgot to mention all the motors are C-face mounted. Yes, and so we have the C-face um, accessories as well that Your we sell boxes, right for adapters. the ACs. It'll also work with these. Um, let's see, this is going to be, hopefully this will be uh, one of our quicker uh, webinars today. Um, let's see, this, this slide here is just showing the um, nameplate. Um, then in the next slide, I think we get into, this is just typically, I mean to change the brush, it's just a matter of using a flat um, head screwdriver, wide blade, uh, there's a small slot with a uh, cover that unscrews when you screw the cover up. The brushes being spring loaded. Uh, they already have the contour the made up to the um, curvature of the um, commutator. Um, you know, it's a, a um, copper braided wire that goes to the actual um, brass plate that makes contact to the um, plate, or I'm sorry, to the wires. And the last slide, I think we're just showing uh, dimensions, all the dimensions of the motor. So if you're sitting out there trying to figure out if this is going to you know, fit in your application, you can go online. And you can um, find all of that on our website. On as well. our website. I actually have our website pulled up here on uh, with the overview page, which basically gives you a ton of information on the motors and everything. Um, we want to talk up, a little yeah. bit about maintenance. Um, well, let's back up. I'll, I'll leave it on this uh, change brushes slide. Okay. Yeah, that was that was one of the questions we had before. Um, was on brushes? Well, it was just maintenance in general on DC motors. I mean, what what kind of maintenance do you need to do to these? Uh, the biggest thing is is your brushes and keeping the motor clean, keeping right. dust and stuff, especially out of the the fan cooled uh, ones. Atmosphere. I mean, you know, if you're if you're going to install the motor in a dusty environment, uh, even though they're Most sealed and everything, have, yeah. um, these are sealed, but you know, still it's a matter of um, opening these up once in a while, like, like Shane just said, you know, blowing the dust out of them and everything. 
So you know, it's a combination of the environment they're running in, how much load is being put on them, temperature, temperature. Um, also monitor your brush wear and everything. Um, typically, um, you know, some of the rules of thumb if these get down to a quarter percent of wear, then it's probably about time to replace them. Don't replace them one at a time. Replace them in pairs. You know, keep them constant. Um, this is kind of hard to explain, and, and there's really not too much. I mean, pulling the brushes out and, and examining them, you know, you're going to determine whether you're getting um, uneven wear. Right. Uh, you're getting, you know, different, like maybe the commutator's starting to break down and you get gouges in part of the brush or the brush chips off. You know, that's the time to replace them, sure. too. Uh, a lot of people don't realize this, but under ideal conditions, once, once the brushes are seated in, and they're running uh, technically if if the application isn't you know using a lot of um, rough abusive loading on the motor and the controller um, basically is given you know a good DC voltage um, there's actually no real contact between the brush and the commutator it's the almost com like it's floating right? it's like it's floating on top of it and the commutator will actually build up a film that acts not as an insulator, but as an air gap, if you have, let me say that, <laughs> that kind of keeps the brushes from wearing and everything. So you know, that's something you, you want to monitor and everything. Um, Do you want to show some of these things? Yeah, if we can we switch got? over Let's to, and basically, uh, if you go over to where Shane's uh, standing over here, uh, what we have set up here is uh, one of the small half horse uh, 90 volt DC armature control. I'm sorry, it's 180 volt. Yes, 180 DC, volt. But it's a half horse. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have um, 230 or three phase back here in the studio. Uh, so we did something that I would not, you know, recommend you typically do in a real application. But if you're just trying to test some stuff and everything. We actually took up one of our uh, control transformers and we're back feeding it so we're putting 120 on this, the secondary and we're tapping off 230 on the primary feeding the dart control and uh, Shane's over there ramping it up and down with the speed pot so I this was very easy to set up with the dart control there's a couple pots in there and there's a chart uh, and you basically set the pots for min max speed, the IR compensation, and some of the other adjustments and everything to get smooth out operation out of the motor. So that basically is um, a 180 volt, um, and that one's a totally enclosed, uh, non ventilated motor. Right. Um, and then over here where I'm standing, we actually. Um, I guess I'll go over there too. You want to come over here? Yeah. I'll play Vanna today. <laughs> okay. And basically what we have here, it's a 90 volt uh, fan cooled, um, and this one happens to be uh, one horse. And just for grins, we took uh, one of the little open chassis dart controls. If you want to throw your um, preset six or five, four, um, there we go. So again, it's a small dart control. We're feeding it with 120. We grounded it. Basically, uh, what Shane has in his hand, if you can see it there, there's a pot that comes with this little controller that you uh, would wire into it to change your speed. But in our case, um, just kind of messing around here, we decided, hey, can we take a Seymour Micro and uh, put a little numeric um, um, entry um, object on the front of the screen and take that and generate from a click a 4 to 20 milliamp signal, go through one of our signal conditioners, and to be honest, the only reason we did that is uh, we used the signal conditioner to give us some isolation between... Well, isolation and also if you have two different devices, one needs 0 to 10, the other one only offers 4 to 20, we can, or vice versa. We can uh, accomplish what we need. The signal conditioner will do it, yeah, it'll... it'll. And um, with the uh, dart control, we were able to typically, looking at the schematic of it, you know, it operates on 0 to 12 volts, but we took out of the signal conditioner 0 to 10 and wired that into where the wiper normal goes in the common. And, uh, you know, this, this is commonly done in a lot of different yeah, if you want an automated, Yeah, if you want an automated control, that's what you could do. Otherwise, like Tom was saying, you wire your motor straight to the uh, controller here and just use a pot for your, your uh, speed. So, so here, here we set and... So on the front of the 
little Seymour Micro. We'll start out about 600. Enter. Motor's running. I don't know if you can hear it. Um, I increase the speed, go up to 1200 RPM. And basically, you know, we actually calibrated, or I'm sorry, we programmed both the uh, Seymour, the click, and the signal conditioner uh, so that 4 to 20 would give 0 to 10 volts, and then corresponding to that would be 0 to 1800 RPM. Um, we can go all the way up to the top speed, just for the fun of it. I have a feeling this is going to make a oh, lot of noise. Is, this is making all kinds of noise here. <laughs> I should say the you know, the motors running smooth. Um, if you notice, you probably can't see it there. Let me turn the motor yep. a bit. But the shaft on the motor and everything, there's a yellow cover on there. I, it, it's actually just slipped on there, but it actually holds the uh, keyway in place. <coughs> uh, so there's a lot of thought in the packaging on these motors. I know when I unpack them, they're totally enclosed or captured in, in foam to keep keep them protected. The brushes spare brushes are in there and the keyways already in the slot with this yellow uh, plastic cap holding it in place. Um, I, I'll have to be honest, I didn't take a lot of time to mess around with the IR comp or some of the other adjustments on the control. I got them in the ballpark and kind of left them there, but we can uh, get this. Tom, let me there. throw you a curveball real quick. Sure. Gu guesstimate, if you wanted to automate a motor with a click and a Seymour, what, how much money do you think we've got tied up here? Um, I mean, real rough and everything, you know, the click, um, I'm using an analog one, so those are what, 130, 140, the micros, well, 139, um, 139 or so. We really could have gotten away without, like we were talking earlier, we could have gotten away without the uh, signal conditioner. We could actually, But it actually helps the application, and it depends on the application. Right. We could look at distance. I mean, I definitely, sure. if I had this setting in one room, the motor was out here in a you know, dirty environment or something, I'd right. probably use 4 to 20 uh, to get out to it. And I, I should mention the um, controllers we're using do offer option uh, cards for analog uh, speed control of, of the card or of the speed control. Uh, we didn't happen to have any and uh, that's why we messed around just threw this together for today. Sure, I mean there's, a, there's all kinds of different applications but with all that plus you know the motor, I forget what is the, the motor cost we've got uh, here. 179 or something like I that. So you know Actually, five six hundred dollars you're at automating a, a, a motor system here. Yeah and uh, again you know DC motors in general um, you know, you would use them um, for low speed, um, variable speed, where you needed high torque, um, you know, fast response, and everything. Yeah, I think the, yeah, a third horse, um, one of the iron horse permanent magnet DC motors, a third horse, 90 volts, starts at $120. All right, we're going to go to the next slide, or it's two slides down. And it's our Q&A. Get to it there. And we're going to stop for a second and take any questions. Like I said, we had some questions beforehand about maintenance, you know, what, what's required of maintenance of these. But like Tom said, I mean, there's no oiling any bearings. There's no greasing. They're sealed. Um, cleaning the fans on those because they're going to suck up a bunch of dust. Right. Checking the uh, brushes and, and cleaning that out as well because you're going to get some some build up. I think we did have a question in regards to, you know, if you take, an, if you take a permanent magnet um, DC motor, and I, I don't have the best answer on this, but I think the question was, if I'm using dynamic braking, you know, does that, um, you know, detriment the brush wear? Does it, you know, does it increase or cause more brush wear? Right. And um, basically the answer, yes. Um, because if you think about it, you know, I'm sitting there running this motor, I'm, if I'm varying the load characteristics on it, the motor's going to try to maintain the set speed and everything. So in that process, every time it goes through a speed change and everything, you know, the dynamics of the brushes, you're getting a little more arcing and everything. Now all of a sudden I want to stop it. Now I have all that ener rotational energy there and I'm going to dump it back through the controller into a brake resistor. I'm actually, I don't want to say arcing the brushes, but I'm, 
you know, I'm dumping more energy right. in the reverse thing, so I'm changing the characteristics. So, yes, um, in my experience, it, it will cause a little more brush wear than normal. Okay. We've got one question here. Um, how, how come we don't sell the DC, uh, the controls for them? I think the reason why, and that's another reason why we have 11 motors that we have. I mean, there's obviously a, a, a large field of motors that we could carry. It's just uh, when we first came to these to bring them out into the market, uh, we try to find out what's going to best suit our customers, what's the biggest sellers, and that's what we brought out. And it just happened. It's just a timing issue. We weren't able to, to uh, nail that down at the same time, but we are going to bring them out. Uh, we're, we're, we're our product managers are currently working you know, with different suppliers to come up with a solution. And, you know, the DC motors kind of fell into place pretty quickly for us. Uh, well, it's because we already had the ACs. But right. as far as AC motor controls, um, you know, we, we build a lot of our own. We have some built. They they didn't offer a DC line, so it wasn't that, you know, it wasn't that easy just to go to a manufacturer that we're already using and say, hey, you know, throw us some DC ones. And if you know our products well, we always try to get, you know, the best product for the price and that's right. you know sometimes to meet our demands it, it takes a little bit of work and uh, we're not going to sell anything that's junk. <laughs> right. I, I mean you know ideally for us and, and our customers or, or whatever you know we, we know it's always better that we try to have all the solutions for any kind of control application where you, you're coming to one you know, place to buy everything from. Yeah, we want to be the one-stop shop. Yeah. And I understand, yeah, you can go out and buy those for less than $100 for the, like for the open face ones. We were looking them up yeah. earlier. But but it's still the inconvenience. Right. Of, you have you know, to write multiple POs or pay with multiple checks or whatnot. But, yeah, so they are working on it. We're working on it, yes. All right. Um, that was the only questions that we had. If you have any more questions, please go ahead and ask them. We're going to move forward, and uh, we can always either answer you as we get to the end of the show, or we can always answer you via email as well. All right, now we're at the end, and a uh, couple little things real quick. Tom's got up here in front of him. You can see that very well. but The catalog? <laughs> the, yeah, um, this is our newest catalog. It just came out here what, about a last month. Ago. month. Yeah. And um, it is, a, you know, it's the, I a forget how many pages. A nice desk reference with uh, how, many, how many parts how many are in there? Are, there's 85, 8,500 8, parts plus. 8,500 parts, and then um, we actually, <laughs> because of the thickness, there's a limitation I found out in what, you know, a printer uh, can actually bind and print and, you know, all that stuff. So the catalog is basically, you know, all the marketing plus 80% uh, of it is all the technical reference and everything. And so we actually came up with a separate price guide, which makes it nice because now, you know, when we have any kind of price changes and everything, we can uh, reprint that and ship it out. And then there's a uh, short form, kind of a over overview yeah, that just shows all the different product lines and everything. And if you haven't seen one of these new catalogs, you haven't been to the website. If you see on the front what it says here, it's two-day delivery. Automation Direct offers free two-day delivery on uh, the standard products, as long as it's not some oversized products or it doesn't have to get shipped from another warehouse. But uh, there's no charge for that. Um, we got a heck of a deal with FedEx. And uh, and plus, if you pay, what is it, over $300, you get free shipping, right? So you're going to get yep. free two-day shipping. All right, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Um, we want to thank everybody for coming in. You can see there's a couple of links there. Don't worry about jotting them down. We'll have them in the thank you email. And um, basically, it's our automation talk. Make sure you go out and sign up for more seminars. We listed another one today as we pulled this one down. So there's always four of them up there. Uh, learn.automationdirect.com is our, our video tutorial website where Tom and I go through and actually show you how these things or you know wire them up, show you how to use them, whatnot. We're not selling anything in there. It's uh, more of uh, it's, this is how you more use it once you've got it, right? And then interconnecting automation. Uh, Doug Bell, he does training classes here at Automation he's Direct. Here this week, yep, he's been here the last couple of weeks doing classes. He travels throughout the U.S. And then he has some websites where you can uh, do training on his websites as well. So that remote control. This one? No, that. That remote control. Oh, it's turned off. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you have any questions for us, make sure you can uh, either chat it in real quick or you can always email me, and that's at live at automationdirect.com, L-I-V-E at automationdirect.com. Thanks, Tom, for Thank doing you, the presentation. Shane. You always did a great job. Lots and, uh, of fun. Hope to see you all again at Automation Talk. Thanks and have a great day. Okay. Now can we play with the helicopter? <laughs>